Hi, my name is Dr. Linda Wilson. Hi, my name is Dr. Allison Bray. Hi, I'm Dr. Betsy Gale Rand. So, when you came to TLU 14 years ago? Yes. Were there other women in the sciences? There was only one other woman um, here, and that was Dr. Deb Ettinger, for whom this series is named, and she was in the biology program. And so when I arrived here, I made the second tenured or tenure track woman. And now, 14 years later, there are six of us, and of course, three of us are sitting here today. So it so, has changed for the positive over? Thankfully, it's changed dramatically. Yeah. It's so nice to have other women to talk with um, about the issues we face in STEM and to share with our students and for us to serve as role models for our students. So when you were going to um, graduate school, were there a lot of women in your program? There were very few women. Um, I'm in computer science. I was in computer engineering then. I often was the only woman in my program, uh, in my classes. It was very lonely at times and very isolated. Um, sadly, there are not enough women now in computer science, but we're always working to encourage women to pursue that. So I had a bit of a different experience in that, in because I went to graduate school in oceanography. There uh -huh. tended to be more women in that field overall. But one thing I've noticed is that a lot of the women that I went to graduate school with are no longer in the workforce. Mm -hmm. So they haven't continued, they've either started families or gone on to different careers. And mm -hmm. So they're no longer in academia or mm -hmm. really using their degrees at this point either, which I find somewhat disheartening in that mm -hmm. all that work went in and, because it wasn't easy. Right. Yeah. Well, and some of my friends stopped after the masters mm -hmm. because the jobs and industry were so attractive and they didn't want to stick out through uh, additional graduate school in order to teach because industry just loves to hire us. Yeah. So what about your experience? My program, my particular year, I was the only woman entering the PhD program. There were a couple master's students. Um, but they weren't studying for the prelims and mm -hmm. or the qualifying exams and that sort of thing. Some of the other years had a stronger groups of women, um, but my first year in particular was pretty isolating. And uh, um, there, there was math, I'm in math, and as far as working with an advisor and tracking my progress, I was pretty isolated throughout. Um, what? Did you have a role model that made you want to go into math? Or did you I was late math? to the game in every sense. I did not think of myself as someone who liked math because I didn't find algebra, I didn't find arithmetic really <laughs> particularly interesting. And arithmetic is a lot of what you get for a long time. Um, in high school, I was discouraged from taking calculus actually, so I did not take calculus in high school. Neither did uh, I. We met with the. Our, at the end of our junior year, we met with our teacher and um, uh, had a little face-to-face, -face, you know, what, what should I take next semester mm -hmm. or next year because there was a couple different options. And I was super scared of calculus and thought it was for geniuses. And she was like, yeah, well, then let's just put you in this other one. And she just sort of agreed with me. Even she'd had me all year long. Um, so I think it, from what I understand in the field of math, and certainly here at TLU, but uh, mentorship was really non-existent for mm -hmm. women back then. There was a whole lot of signals that, um, well, we just we just assume you aren't really. We're we're not encouraging you. We're just mm -hmm. contributing to the noise that this is not really a great fit for you. Um, and from what I can gather nationally, there's a lot more attention paid to nipping that impulse in the bud, and certainly here at TLU we're plenty cognizant of that. Absolutely. Cause yeah, one of my high school teachers was astonished that I was thinking of going into mm -hmm. math and computer science and college, and well, I should be an English major. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that she was intending it based on gender, but she knew I wrote well, and but there are all these signals behind yeah. the scenes as if to say, well, no, you're supposed to be in the liberal arts. You're not supposed to be in the sciences. And by the way, if it makes you feel better, I was clueless in calculus in high school. <laughs> I did not understand it at all. Uh -huh. And I tell my students, uh, my current students all the time, that I had to take calculus twice to understand mm -hmm. it. 
and that I still went on and got a math degree, yeah. among other things, and that it's okay to take something twice. You don't have to get it the first time. Absolutely. So. so I think we are a little unusual here at TLU, at least in chemistry, because we have a lot of female students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, translates a little bit over to math, too. It does, because we have a fair number of math double majors who pick up a physics degree or a chemistry degree or uh, a CS degree. Um, so I feel like we're doing a pretty good job of mentoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope so. That's one of the things we try hard to do here. I would like to see us get more students in computer science and information systems. Yeah. I think sometimes students arrive thinking, if I haven't been studying computer science before I get to college, then I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. And that is far from the truth. In fact, many of our young women who have pursued and graduated with CS degrees started their computer science here. They hadn't been studying it for years and years like some of the male students. That was certainly what intimidated me when I was an mm -hmm. undergraduate is that I felt like, uh, well, I didn't tinker with computers on my own. Mm -hmm. I didn't seek it out, and so I, it wouldn't be, I would be behind before even getting started, and now I think that's absurd. I'm good at thinking logically, um, but it was salient to me at the time. And really, that's what it takes to be a good computer scientist is mm -hmm. attention to details and thinking carefully. And uh, many of the young women do very, very well. Mm -hmm. And I won't say that my parents didn't encourage me to go into science. My dad is a scientist, and I really very much wanted to do what he did. That's mm -hmm. why I decided probably in kindergarten to be a chemist. But maybe more steadily, and my dad will love me for this, but he bought my brother a chemistry set. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I never got the chemistry set. Uh -huh. So I don't think it was intentional, but it's the little things that probably happened along the way, lots mm -hmm. of little things that mm -hmm. are always sort of eating it. Yeah, you know your confidence. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe am I really? Or am I really supposed to be you, here? Yeah, as an undergraduate, you tell someone this happens all the time, and I'm sure it still happens. But uh, that if you are a female and you say you are a math major, they say, "Oh, do you want to teach high school?" Exactly. I heard yes. that all the time because at one point I was going to double <laughs> major in math and computer science, mm -hmm. and that's what I would hear. And of course, in my case, it may be because both of my parents were high school math teachers, mm -hmm. but that's so that all I would ever sense. hear. Mm -hmm. as if there's nothing else you can do. And perhaps the boys get asked that too, the mm -hmm. male students, I have no idea. Um, but it does sort of reinforce this like, oh, are you thinking about teaching in the... And it's not that teaching's <laughs> not important because we're Absolutely. thankful for good high school teachers. Absolutely. But there's... But, uh, but you're getting pigeonholed and exactly. uh, um, it contributes to the dropout rate as you move towards the research track. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the things we're seeing still nationally in chemistry is that we have a lot of good undergraduate females and a lot of good undergraduate males as well, but the males t tend to go on to graduate degrees whereas the females don't. Mm -hmm. They either get a job in industry and that's the end of it or, again, off to have families or do other things in mm -hmm. graduate school, especially a PhD is a long commitment mm -hmm. at an mm -hmm. age where a lot of women maybe don't want to or are not being encouraged to go on for that next step. Mm -hmm. But we should be clear here that we're interested in encouraging people to pursue STEM whether they're going on to grad school or not. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Well, we're really encouraging them to be introspective and see what's a good fit mm -hmm. for themselves and not have these, uh, and on a larger scale to remove gender-based obstacles mm -hmm. that sometimes are impediments between what's right for the individual. Just the same way that I think uh, uh, male college students are discouraged from some of the teachings, exactly. es especially K through eight and that sort of thing. Like it's, it does, the patriarchy hurts everybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, um, so I think it's not so much about encouraging women to be in STEM, we wanna encourage people to be in STEM. Exactly, and have an eye out for the obstacles in the way. I did have a, mentor just sort of reviewing back over over things i did have i did an reu in college with a woman named karen smith um and that was really that was the only female math professor and i didn't have her for a class it was just for this uh research um the only female math professor that i had in undergraduate or grad school and she was the one that sat down and was like yeah why wouldn't you go to graduate school? Let's figure out a list of schools for you to apply to. Um, so I do want to sort of give a shout out to her. So in your entire undergraduate career, you had one female? 
Yes. Math professor. Yes. Wow. And it wasn't for a class. It was just, it just it was for, for the internship. summer project, which was a But a I guess I, I could almost say the same. I had mm -hmm. um, the only female undergraduate chemistry professors that I had were one for organic. Mm -hmm. And see, I had none in my area. Mm -hmm. I had one in grad school outside of my area over in mechanical engineering where my minor was in operations research, which you're familiar with that because it's an area of applied math. Yep. And believe it or not, the OR group that I was working with as per my minor was in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. So I think partly what I'm hearing here is that mentoring. Mentoring matters a lot. It mm -hmm. really does. Uh, yeah. And I was lucky to have in college, uh, an outside of college, but that was somebody I was working for that was a really strong female figure. That, And I do feel like saying there was a, a female mathematician at UT, more than one, but specifically I'm thinking of uh, Karen Olinbeck now, um, who did a lot of supporting women undergrad, women grad students. Um, I just didn't specifically have her in the classroom. That was the mm -hmm. only distinction I was making. So there were supportive women in graduate around. school around. Few, <laughs> but yeah. she was she was she was great. Yeah. I was also fortunate growing up in that my father believed in me. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up tinkering with everything. I tore things apart. Mm -hmm. I took them apart. I helped him build stuff around the house. And so within the house, we weren't defined by gender roles mm -hmm. in that I was daddy's helper. And so if he needed to build something around the house, I was the one, not my brother, who's a klutz, mm -hmm. still a klutz to this day, but I was the one who was his helper. That is funny you should bring that up because actually, you know, despite the chemistry set, I uh -huh. generally was the one that was helping to fix the dryer or whatever uh, exactly. was broken. And, it, and my brother just didn't really have an interest in it. Mm -hmm. So I still find it very ironic that mm -hmm. the one thing I really wanted, which was that silly chemistry <laughs> set, <laughs> didn't under, you know, end up under the Christmas tree. My version of that story is there was one, I don't, know, was, I don't know who sent us these, but we got these presents sort of out of the blue. And I watched my oldest brother open it, and it was a... a really amazing pocket knife and I've been wanting a pocket knife and they already had pocket knives so I was like oh this is great and then my middle brother opened it and he got the same pocket knife and then I opened mine and it was shaped just the same and it was a nail file kit. <laughs> 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 That's terrible. Uh, so it sounds like we all grew up thinking outside the box yeah, a little bit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I think we need to as professors mm -hmm. put those options in front of students. Mm -hmm. You know, there's grad school, there's teaching, all of these mm -hmm. many varieties of options. There's industry, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Don't just pigeonhole yourself into one. There's a lot of choices out there. And also feel free to explore once you get to college. So we've talked about our different departments and the two we haven't really hit on would be biology and then physics. And I think in biology, because I see a lot of those students, it seems that they have pretty good female numbers, pretty mm -hmm. high ratio of females to males. The one place where we're still not making it is physics. Physics is still, even at TLU, very dominated by male students. Mm -hmm. And they're good students, but we are just not seeing the females mm. grab on, despite a very strong female role model. Physics and CS, I would say, are equally yes, same. sort of. Yes, and uh, Dr. Sansi, Dr. Tony Sansi, who's head of our physics department, and I have discussed this, that despite having strong female role models in both departments, mm -hmm. we see small numbers of women in both programs, but we're always working to try to recruit more women. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's done a great job. There's some dynamite young women in the physics and applied physics programs, mm -hmm. but it's a constant battle to draw more women to them. So is it a battle to bring them in or is it a battle to keep them or both? I would say both. Okay. In some cases, we're just not getting them across the doorstep. Um, it's not a lack of talent. It's not a lack of ability. It's mm -hmm. more just getting them to be aware that they can do it and that it's cool and it's fun mm -hmm. and it's interesting. It's the same thing we see in computer science. Once we get them in the room and they find out, hey, there's a lot of fun stuff here. And it's not just sitting in a cubicle working in isolation. We work in teams. We solve cool problems. And the same thing true with the physics and applied physics. It's just a matter of exposure. I think there's a tipping point along, somewhere along the way. I, I've, I've heard this for CEO boards and things like that, that um, having a single woman on the CEO board does not change mm -hmm. anything. Having three or so changes how things operate, mm -hmm. and the same with Supreme Courts in places like this. Uh, that um, 
it is not much fun to always be the only woman in mm -hmm. the room. It gets old, it's grating, it is um, it just sort of, it's, un, it's just, it gets old. Uh, and so there's really a critical mass to mm -hmm. shoot for. And I think it's, we achieve it sometimes and sometimes not, um, but that we're, we're working towards it uh, of a third Mm -hmm. women when the when the room is around a third that the you have enough for a social group you have enough to have a little bit of a cohort mm -hmm. um, and it really makes a big difference to hit a threshold right around there so because we're pretty much one per department at this point well true mm -hmm. We well, biology has biology two. has two. I was thinking more of the students in the classroom. but in the students but we've we've made yeah. our own social group absolutely right? yes yeah and so we are are we a third of the STEM faculty. That's a good question. I hadn't stopped to count. No. I don't think we are yet. Mm -hmm. No. But we've made such progress. No, we're mm -hmm. in, well, a quarter of chemistry, which right. which is very much in line with the national average. Most mm -hmm. chemistry departments are one well, quarter female. Well, we're half of CS and IS, but we're not uh, a half of the math or no, a third of the math. A, no, so. no. Right. And physics, where it is a third. Right. And, and, and biology, two out of whatever they have. I said that there, there's force in numbers. Yeah. And so we came up with along with Dr. Sansi, a social group, mm -hmm. support group for women in STEM, and I believe our acronym is WITS, Women in Technology, technology and Science. And Maybe Technology science. and Science. And so why did we form this group? Well, as much as anything, to share our common experiences, to better um, support our students. Partly we're trying to, to introduce students to to scientists they may never have heard of and mathematicians they mm -hmm. may never have heard of. Mm -hmm. We teach in a lot of, because I've been teaching general chemistry right now, we go through a lot of male chemists that mm -hmm. discovered everything from mm -hmm. electrons to the gas laws. And, and women are so rarely mentioned in a textbook. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we did was try to bring out from the shadows some of these women who have made huge contributions mm -hmm. to science mm -hmm. that we've probably never heard of. We've all heard of Marie Curie and that's about where our limit of historical women in science ends, right? Mm -hmm. So we did an ice cream social to try and introduce people to all these hidden women in science, sort of along the lines of the Hidden Figures movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and see that's made it a little easier for me in computer science, not only to talk about hidden figures, about human computers, but one of the earliest computer role models was Admiral Grace Murray Hopper, um, who not only was a Navy Admiral, but did great things in early computing. Uh, including the language COBOL, mm -hmm. and she found the first computer bug, although the term bug was used previously to represent an error by Edison. Um, her team found the first computer bug, which actually was a moth <laughs> in a computer. So literally, and it was a bug. Literally, it was oh. a bug. And um, so I, fortunately in computing, we have a few women that we can talk about, but you're right, so often in the sciences, mm -hmm. we hear about what all the guys did and not so much about what the women did. Which is not at all to downplay their contributions <coughs> no. because we need those gas laws and we need mm -hmm. to know how much an electron weighs, but exactly, there was a lot going on behind the scenes that often right. was women doing. And also in computing, work. we can talk about Ada Lovelace mm -hmm. going way back, who was considered to be the first programmer before we had electromagnetic computers and things like that. But again, students don't learn about that in their history classes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it doesn't show up in a lot of textbooks. No. The real loss is when you're not harnessing the full workforce. If you don't have access to all the brain power out there, then I think everybody suffers. Mm -hmm. um, and so the dream or the vision would be that our best talent, who also feels a passion for it, sees a path forward for herself and himself. Um, to the career that really lights them up, where they can make a contribution, where they can grow. Absolutely. There's a lot of problems out there that need solving, and mm -hmm. we don't know who the right brain to solve that problem is. We don't want to exclude anyone. Yeah. We want to get all the answers out there, try and find the best one. And maybe one of you watching this will be the next great thinker in the sciences. The next Ada Lovelace. Mm -hmm. I love it. Or Grace Murray Hopper.